when you talk about shopping at a non-black owned business, getting beat up for allegedly stealing some eyelashes, and then black people come around and still go back to non-black owned businesses to patronize them, that's Stockholm Syndrome, right? Oh, but it comes around to, okay, as soon as something bad happens, like this black lady allegedly stole some damn eyelashes, which cost, oh man, please, it's not even worth mentioning how much it costs because I'm pretty sure the how much is made in China or somewhere in Asia is pennies on a dollar. I, I, these are facts. But as soon as something as bad happens in a non-black owned business where someone gets assaulted, shot, etc., here comes the boycotts. Here comes the marches. Black people do not know how to be pro proactive. That's the problem. You guys are not proactive whatsoever. The first thing you need to always focus on is your own people. And so since, you know, black people and, and, and especially millennials in, in my age bracket, you know, we have a combined you know, total spending, so-called spending power of $1.1 trillion. And then by the year 2020, it'll be $1.3 trillion. And 90% of our money goes outside of our own damn community. So our, you know, based off what Dr. Claude Anderson says, our dollar bounces in our own community one time. That's it. In other communities, they bounce around seven, eight times. So we love to spend outside of our own community and not take care of our own. You know, it's funny, I had to use my own damn video as an intro to remind you that this is a repetitive cycle amongst our people. We love the abuse. We love Stockholm Syndrome. We love to patronize non-black businesses. And this is the end result. Yeah, I don't have to repeat myself. I said it all in that, in that very short clip. And that video was last year. In March of 2017. Where I was talking about an incident extremely similar to what happened in Brooklyn. <laughs> where a black person patronized a non-black business a nail salon, the, the so-called Asian workers accused the black person of stealing some eyelashes. Therefore, they got a beat. Basically, whenever you cross a domain that's not your people, whenever you patronize a business that's not of your own people, they can do what you want. They, they can do what the hell they want to do to you. It's open season. So you get beat up as a result for you patronizing a non-black business, et cetera, et cetera. To avoid that situation, it's very simple. Go and patronize a black business. Go and patronize a black nail salon. Now, and as I said in that video before, and I'll say it again, it's a combination of Stockholm Syndrome, but what happens is when you have all of these non-black businesses that set up shop in our so-called communities, right? They set up shop in our communities. Here, here's, the, here's the pattern you see, as I said before. The pattern that you see in these, in our so-called communities, in black neighborhoods specifically. The patterns are this. You see food deserts, liquor stores, churches, right? You see check cashing stores, you see abortion clinics, et cetera, et cetera. You see that, that's a pattern. You see that. But you don't see that in affluent communities. You don't see that in so-called Jewish communities. You don't see that in so-called Native American communities, right? You don't see that in any other ethnic community besides the so-called black community or black neighborhoods. It's strategic. There's the reason why that's happening. It's to continue to control and subjugate and marginalize people classified as black or African-American. Point blank and simple. 
And this is a repetitive cycle where, as you can see in this clip here, you patronize a non-black business. Let me stop that commercial real quick. When you patronize a non-black business, they can make up any kind of rule or whatever the case may be. They think you're still in something. They think you didn't pay enough money. They think they can think whatever. Get, get out of my store. They don't even speak the damn language. They recognize group economics. We don't. They practice group economics. They practice an ec they understand an economic base based off their own people. We simply do not. Because what I was alluding to before is convenience. It's easier to go down the street just a couple blocks away to go to a non-black business as opposed to looking for a black business of that same caliber that's more than likely farther away. It's more of a convenient drive or convenient distance to go down a, a, a non-black business, a restaurant, a nail salon, you know, uh, whatever the case may be. It's in closer proximity. And that's why they set up shop in our so-called neighborhoods, in our so-called communities, rather. They set up shop in our neighborhoods because they understand the pattern of our spending. We spend outside of our own community 90, more than 90% of the time, as opposed to our own. When was the last time you seen a black business kick an Asian person out of their business and beating them up in the process. When's the last time you seen that happen? Right? I'll wait. <laughs> and the pattern continues. I just saw a clip. Uh, I saw this clip a couple days ago with Claudia Jordan where uh, she patronized a non-black business, I believe in Burbank, California. She was trying to get some kind of beauty products and she was accused of, of harassing this lady at this beauty supply store. I'll play the clip. You are a liar, because you told me about, you saw me hair clip, and I take it home, it has no clip. And then you want to tell me I'm lying. Would you stop talking to my business, please? I'm, I'm gonna okay, go. see? What's your name? It's not my business. Your, na your name is, you can take my money though? What are you gonna do, call the police? Huh? You'll be famous on the internet really well. Operator. But you, you get the point. Now, it's to the point where she posted another clip, another video, talking about the, uh, the beauty supply store is going to sue her for defamation. I'll play the clip real quick. Beauty supply store Betty. Um, she just had some faux lawyer call me from a Google number saying, Hello, this is Claudia Jordan. And I said, Yes. And then, thank you. Called him back. It's a guy named Eric who does her dirty work who says that they're sending me a cease and desist letter and that they're going to sue me for def defamation of character. I defamed her character by posting the video. And my caption, I guess. That's the sound of me worried. You want to play this game? We can play this game. I said, listen, we can have two lawsuits then, because I was going to leave it alone. I'm not going to tolerate this mistreatment of paying customers. Not going to happen. So again, that's that's the repetitive pattern that you see. So obviously. You know, when you are mistreated by patronizing a non-black business, what's the what's the pattern that you see? Protests, get out of my community, which is not our community. We don't own or control anything. So they're going to set up shop and they're going to uh, black people are still going to go ahead and patronize these non-black businesses anyway and still be and still be mistreated because of Stockholm syndrome. And you know now she's starting to get hip to making sure she's conscious of black owned beauty supply stores which i give her kudos for that but you know you should have been proactive black people need to be proactive 
Our dollar circulates one time in our so-called communities, one time. Other communities, six, seven times plus. Now, I wouldn't be surprised 20 years from now, I live in Miami Gardens, the blackest city in the state of Florida. Our economic base, it thrives on non-black businesses. Hard Rock Stadium, we have a new shopping plaza that was uh, stripped. They stripped the Carroll City uh, flea market, which was an eyesore. But all of these businesses they're setting up shop there are non-black owned. So when these businesses shut up shop, a uh, uh, shop here, excuse me, when they set up shop here, it helps the economic base of Miami Gardens, taxes, IRS, etc. We depend on these non-black businesses for the city that's compromised of over 200,000 people classified as black or African-American. The largest populated city of blacks and African-Americans in the state of Florida is Miami Gardens. I wouldn't be surprised if this particular city is gentrified because I see these Ashkenazi Jewish people and they coming in, they coming in droves in my community buying up houses they are frugal minimalists they just bought a house i don't see no goddamn curtains they got one damn van they walk everywhere and there's no synagogue in sight <laughs> you know what i'm saying i would not be surprised this place is, gentr is gentrified within 10 to 20 years and this is the blackest city in the state of florida but that's neither here nor there but, you know, I, I didn't want to be too long with this video, man. I, I made my point with my first video. This is a repetitive cycle. Hey, very simple. To avoid getting beat up and shot and killed by these businesses and mistreated, don't patronize them. Seek out your own people and patronize a black business. Circulate the dollar in our communities. Let's have an economic base in our communities. It's just that simple. It's just that simple. So these Asians, the uh, the uh, Korean co work the Korean workers in Brooklyn, supposedly or allegedly they got arrested, which I'm pretty sure they didn't get arrested. Um, but obviously they're protesting out there. They're angry and all that stuff. You better do that to the other 1,500 non-black uh, beauty supply and nail salon shops in New York. Have that same energy to every other non-black beauty supply store in the state of New York or New York City. Go around to every other uh, nail shop that's in Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, Bronx, Staten Island, etc. And have that same energy and kick them out of, 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 out of, of those communities as well. Have that same energy. And, sh and shed some light on some black owned beauty supply stores and black owned businesses such as uh, a nail shop focus on that all right so anyway those are my quick thoughts about that story family leave your comments down below let me know what you guys think uh that you guys uh remember the incident from last year that happened in north carolina where the chick got beat up by the uh asian workers yeah, I remember that story and how it's basically the same thing that happened to late, it happened in Brooklyn. Same thing. Leave your comments down below and how this relates. And also, um, you know, let people know about some black owned beauty supply stores in your area as well. Leave links and, and drop, you know, advertisement of black owned beauty supply stores in your city. Drop it down below in the comment section, family. Make sure you follow me on social media at GMOG Media TV. Till next time, family Chauncey, a.k.a. The Black Separatist, signing out. Peace.